a majority of news and media publishers struggle to get their articles featured on Google Discover. Let's figure out how to crack the Google Discover code. So what is Google Discover? Google Discover is a content feed that is AI powered. Now, when I say AI powered, what it does is it uses information from a reader, what they particularly like to read about, topics that they are frequently searching for and recommends content to them in a feed. So where is Google Discover visible? Now Google Discover would be visible, say for example, if you're using an Android smartphone, when you swipe right from the home screen, you'll see the Google Discover feed there. Similarly, if you have the Google app on your iPhone, that's where you will see the Google feed. So everything that you are, you have been reading or you've been searching for, Google will recommend similar articles in Google Discover. Now Google Discover has huge potential when it comes to news and media publishers because it changes how content is consumed by readers. For example, compared to someone searching for a particular page and then reading it, here it's simply recommended based on how likely they are to read it. So if you are a football fanatic who constantly searches for the latest football matches, scores and stuff, Google's feed is going to start recommending you football related articles based on your search history, your likelihood of reading the latest football match updates and even opinion pieces on these topics. And as a result, people are more likely to click on this content because they're interested in it and they're not even searching for it. So in order to rank very, very well for Google Discover, a hack would be to create web stories. Of course, articles will feature in Google Discover, but web stories, in my experience, feature more often and have better results. And it's beneficial for a publisher to do web stories because they also require less time and they are more engaging. So for those who've not explored web stories yet, these are a lot like your Instagram stories. So you will be able to click on a carousal of sorts and look at multiple posts that you can create. Now these are very, very small snackable content and they're highly engaging. Another reason for the popularity of the web story is its aspect ratio. So because it has the 9 is to 16 aspect ratio, it pretty much takes the entire uh, screen of the mobile phone, giving the readers an immersive experience of it. So once they are on a web story, they are hooked, similar to what you experience on an Insta story. But there's a major difference here. Insta stories typically will survive only for 24 hours. And once the time is up, these will disappear. But for web stories, they are going to be live forever. So these are shareable, can be clicked at any time, and publishers will get much higher return on a web story compared to an Insta story. So here is why you should consider Google Discover. Audience that has already consumed your content and likes it, now I'm talking about both direct audience as well as flyby visitors. They will be served your content again. And the beauty of it is that you do not have to compete with competitors on a SERP page. If a particular audience reads an article spending a lot of time on your website, Google is more likely to recommend them other articles that it might seem is relevant to the same reader. Now, as a publisher, you would be curious on how a Google discovery feed is generated for a particular reader. Now, these are the three factors that Google basically looks at when recommending content. One is their website and app activity. What kind of websites they frequent? What kind of articles they read? What kind of topics they follow? So this is taken into account and they kind of create a profile of what a particular reader likes to read about. Their location is also very, very important. Say for example, if you are based out of Mumbai, and you're reading a lot of content that is local. You want to know the local news, what's happening with respect to the traffic in a particular area. All of this is taken into account when Google recommends you this. Else, without location history, it would probably not be as accurate and would probably 
give you content that's related to say Bangalore or Pune for that matter, which wouldn't be helpful. So Google takes your location into account as well. What are the other apps that you use and what are the topics you follow? Google also allows you to modify the topics you follow in the Google feed itself. As a result, it improves its accuracy over time. So if you use multiple Google products such as Google Search and Google Chrome browser, it gets data from these products and maps what kind of content you would like to read. And accordingly, it populates it in the Discover feed. If a reader likes to read about food recipes for that matter, then the Google Discover algorithm will recommend them more articles on recipes. So the benefit is for all publishers that put out recipes. So before we move on to optimizing for Google Discover, it's important to know what kind of formats work for it. So there are four formats that work on Google Discover. Articles, web stories, YouTube videos and shorts, and ad campaigns. Now as a publisher, if you experiment with all these different formats, you're increasing your chances of appearing on Google Discover. There are multiple ways to optimize for Google Discover. Let's go over them one by one. I would first want you to optimize the quality of your content. And this rule applies pan format. So whether it's an article, a web story, or it's a YouTube video or short, the quality of content needs to be top notch. And when I mean that, I say that you need to go in depth in the article or your point that you're putting across. Simply rehashing what other publishers have published is not going to cut it anymore. To do this, I'd want you to pick up a topic and then analyze what all people are searching for. You can do this by looking at the FAQ section when you're searching for this particular keyword on Google search. You can also do a trend analysis to identify if this topic has an upward trend or a downward trend. If you were to cover a particular topic, I would want you to go in depth and cover all the different questions and aspects that people are commonly looking for. For example, if you are an automobile review portal, what are the questions that people commonly ask about a particular vehicle? It's better to have in-depth information in one web story or in your article itself. What that does is people spend more time reading your content, people are more likely to share it with other people and in general, this gives Google a signal that this particular article that you've written is good for an audience that's looking for automobiles. So naturally, it will pop up in the Google feed or rather Google Discover for everyone who's interested in automobiles. When you're researching for this topic, look at what people are asking on Reddit or Quora for that matter. If you try to cover different questions that people would usually have, and have answers to it in your page itself, it builds credibility. People are more likely to trust your content and come back to it over and over again. Use high quality images in order to make it visually appealing. Because look at what you are doing when it comes to Instagram. Stories that are visually catchy, well, you spend a lot of time on it, don't you? So similarly on Google Discover, if you have a catchy feature image or something that will peak a reader's interest, they are more likely to click on it. And when more people click on it, Google gets the signal that, hey, this topic is interesting for people who are usually surfing about these topics. And as a result, this will show up in multiple Google Discover feeds and you will get good traffic. If you can include data in your articles, that will improve the quality of information that you're passing off to your readers. Now this data can come from surveys that you've done for your audience or even statistics that someone else has done. But ensure that the data points you bring forward are useful to your audience. This helps build your credibility and people are going to trust you more. Now that you have crafted the perfect piece of content, titling it appropriately is important. Now I know a lot of publishers would want to go the clickbait route. And that is the first thing that Google is gonna flag. Google Discover, according to its guidelines, does not prefer clickbaity titles. So if you are thinking of putting a title and a couple of dots at the end of it, well, that's not gonna work. Use titles that will pique someone's interest. If someone wants to know about the outcome of a football match, you can put a hook in the title itself. For different topics, different things work. 
you'll have to figure out what works best for the content you're creating. I'll leave you with title examples that work really well on Google Discover. Point number one, lists. Everyone likes reading lists. So if you're gonna make a list of the top seven places to visit, the top 10 recipes to look for, or the top five memorable events in football, well, those lists are gonna get a lot of views. The second title format is the how-to. How to write a blog. How to send a push notification. Now, these type of title formats work very well. And when Google is suggesting topics, people who are generally interested in these topics would want to know that. And that will drive clicks to your articles. The third title format, I would say, would be the versus. Football versus cricket, which one is better? Or it can be Sachin Tendulkar versus Virat Kohli. Who's the better batsman? So the versus title also has a comparison tone to it. And people who want to seek more information on that topic are more likely to click on these formats. And the fourth title format that I would want to leave you with is the negative spin. Why is sugar bad for you? Why inadequate sleep is going to ruin your health? So these formats are going to cause someone to pause and think, hey, I would want to know that. And that is something that works really well on Google Discover. Now that you know what title formats work best on Google Discover, put yourself in Google's shoes. How would Google pick websites or publishers to showcase content from? Google will use its EEAT formula. This is experience, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. So if your publication qualifies all of these criteria, you're more likely to rank above your competition. To do that, ensure that your authors are experts in the content they're writing. You wouldn't want to have a chef write about politics, would you? That article is not going to work and Google's not going to recommend it. If you are a business portal that primarily pushes out a lot of finance content and you start going in the sports domain, Again, your authoritativeness is not in the sports domain. So articles that you write on finance will rank much better and will also feature on Google Discover compared to any other topic like sports. So be an expert in your niche, write and cover articles in your niche alone. It's better to have a higher chunk of your same niche instead of trying to do everything else. If you are a publisher that covers multiple niches, Ensure that your website URLs are categorized properly. And when it comes to trustworthiness, it's important to showcase if the author and the publication is trustworthy. You can do this by including the amount of experience the author has in a particular domain. Publishers that have been publishing content for a really long time are trustworthy. And Google prioritizes older publications over newer ones. If you are a new publisher, stay at it. You will build trust over time. And ultimately, if you want to crack Google Discover, you need to ensure that your content is optimized for smartphones. Because when you look at how Google Discover operates, it's primarily a mobile first experience. And it looks like Google is shifting everything in the same direction. So optimizing your content for mobile is a crucial step in order to feature your content on Google Discover. Your page should load quickly especially on a mobile connection. You can do this by compressing images. If you are on WordPress, you can use image optimization tools. In fact, we have a video on the best plugins available. I'll link that in the description. You can also go ahead and minify your CSS and HTML codes. This ensures that the mobile browser does not spend a lot of time in reading those codes and rendering your layout effectively. Smaller codes would be faster to execute, improving your page load speed. You should also ensure that your content is readable on smartphones. There's no point in compressing images, lazy loading them, and optimizing your HTML code if the font and the layout on smartphones is not all that great. A lot of people tend to make two different pages, one for desktop, one for mobile. But at this point, I would recommend you to have a responsive page, which changes based on the device it's served on. This helps readers get the best experience. And as publishers, you don't have to go about managing two different pages.
Now what I've seen is Google Discover is a great source of bringing new audiences to your website. But as publishers, it's crucial for you to convert them into your audience. I would highly recommend you to do so by using push notifications and email newsletters to convert them into your own audience. I hope this helps.